Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia! Claudia, don't get lost. Who's lost? I think I ought to tie a bell on you, like a cow or something. So when you wander off like that, I know which way to send the bloodhound. What would a cow and bloodhounds be doing in a department store? I'm sure I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing in one. You came here with me. You have the toaster fixed, remember? <gasps> Mom, isn't that a lovely scarf? You mean the gray one? With the silver threads in it. It's nice, but I didn't think you wanted a scarf. Well, I don't really. Maybe I ought to get something for the house. Like a scarf or bedroom slippers. That's all you've looked at so far. What do they have to do with a toaster? Oh, they just happen to be around. Mama, look at that. Isn't that just the thing for the house? Isn't what? That thing over there. It's impolite to point, but, but maybe you'd better anyway. I don't see why it is. Why it is what? Impolite to point. How's anybody supposed to know what you're talking about if you can't point? Some people have been known to describe things. When they're talking about barn doors, they're intelligent enough to say barn doors. You apparently... Well, all you can do is point. Mama, anybody can tell a barn door when they see it, but who can tell what that is? I thought you said it was just a thing for the house. What I can tell of it is. Oh, Oh, that thing. What would you call it? Well, it's a combination barometer and thermometer and clock and something else. It says humidity. Then it's probably a dial for telling you how much humidity there is in the air. Well, who wants to know that? Lots of people, I guess. Lots of people who want to know how much humidity there is in the air want to know, but I can't think of anybody else, can you? I'm afraid I can't. And it's all mounted on a tobacco humidor. What do you think of it? I'm afraid it's so practical that it's completely useless. What do you think? Mm, the humidor spoils it. It'd be too much for David. You think David would like that? No, he'd hate it. I think. That's the first thing you said all morning that makes any sense. Now, come on, Claudia. Toasters get fixed on the second floor. No, I have to get something for the house. Excuse me. Maybe we can't even use it at all for a while, but it's sort of to celebrate it. Uh, like a weather vane, maybe? That's just right. Or an iron duck with our names on it to put out in front. I mean, Mr. Paradiso is going to make us a sign. He said he would. Who's Mr. Paradiso? Oh, he's in Eastbrook. I didn't ask you where Mr. Paradiso is. Didn't you? With a name like that, I always think everybody's going to ask where he is. He's the general contractor. Then you found one. We saw his name on a sign, and this is the first house he ever worked on. I mean, for himself. As the first house you've ever owned. Yep. This combination could be as harmonious a mixture as ten pounds of dynamite in a kitchen mat. You don't know Mr. Paradiso. Let's surprise me, shall we? And wait till he's finished working on the house. Perhaps then it won't be considered he's, necessary for me to meet him. He's the sweetest and the most impolite man you ever met. Everybody in Eastbrook thinks he's a whippersnapper and brash and strapperous and inexperienced. And he keeps interrupting. And, Mama, he's charming. David and he get along beautifully. It couldn't be that your general impression of him is rather colored by the way you feel about the house. Oh, no. It couldn't be that just because you're so specially excited about the house, you're excited about Mr. Paradiso, too. Who's excited about the house especially? Couldn't be you, could it? Why, your eyes are so bright that if you were a few years younger, I'd be sure you had the measles again. It is exciting. For a long time, you didn't seem to. It's so exciting, it almost doesn't seem fair. That's a funny word. I mean, when so many people have... No place at all. Not even a place to be alone in. It doesn't seem right that we should be owning a place of our own. And Mr. Paradiso says it's one of the finest houses in Eastbrook. I mean, as an architect. Then you like the house. Like it? Do you realize it's an authentic salt box built in 1760? If I didn't realize it after a month of hearing about it and seeing it four times, I'd be a lot stupider than even I admit to be. And it was built by Adam Martin, who built a lot of the finest old places in Connecticut. That's fine. Are you going to like living in it as much as you like owning it? Living in it? 
I didn't even think about that. But, Mama, it, it is a wonderful house. You've decided that. And I suppose this present you dragged me down here to buy is a sort of apology to it for having taken so long to find out. I don't understand you at all. Sometimes. A little. You understand me perfectly. Well, let's get on with it. We've got to find you a peace offering. It has to be something really special. And we have to find it today. Well, don't you think it's best to get things when you're all excited about them? I think it's best to get them when you have some place to send them, especially mm -hmm. when you can send them where you want them to go. That's just what I don't want to do. You want to keep them in your apartment so you can remember that you're a couple of landowners. That's it? Is it likely to be in the way? It doesn't have to be something big, just something for the house. Like a plowshare. That's big. Well, well, you do know something about farming after all. Uh, how about those umbrella stands over there? Where? Uh, wouldn't that be just the thing for the front door? Mama, you aren't serious. How about fireplace matches? They won't keep, will they? Besides, I can't see why ordinary matches aren't just as good. I expect after two years in Eastbrook, you'll be making your fires by rubbing two sticks together. You know, I've been thinking about andirons. They'll be handy to have in your apartment all winter long. How about a mailbox? Mm, the house has one. A croquet set? This is going to be a farm, Mama. Hey, look. What now? That sign in front of the elevator. The advertisement, I mean. That? Don't you think it's perfect? It's just what we're going to need. But, Claudia, it's so... Come on, Mama. The elevator's almost full. You're serious? I certainly am. And I'm going to have them send it over this afternoon. <laughs> Claudia. Oh, Claudia. It's me, I'm home. Great. Jumping bullfrogs, what's that? David, why didn't you make any songs? I didn't hear you come, come in. I was fixing my hair. Did you notice anything different? Darling, you're uh, home. Uh, one moment, please. Oh, you noticed it. Noticed it? I can't notice anything else. Darling, that's sweet. Do you like it? Uh, how can I tell if I like it? You haven't unwrapped it. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm so used to it already. I thought you meant my hair. Well, uh, what is that? That? Oh, it's a little something for the house. A little something for the house? Well, it looks like a big house for the something. <laughs> it really isn't so big. Oh, no. Locomotives are bigger, I suppose. I mean, it's just the wrappings that make it look so big. You mean it's just six feet of paper, and when we get it all off, there's a pocket knife inside. Why don't you just take it off and see? <laughs> Why take it off here? Why didn't you have it sent right to the country? Or, well... What I mean is, uh, what was the big hurry? We don't need anything up there for the next three months, That's anyhow. That's just why I had it sent here. Oh, well, everything's perfectly clear now. You're just going to stand there. Aren't you even going to open it at all? Haven't you any curiosity? Oh, I've got curiosity, all right. But I'm I'm a little bit scared. Whatever it is, it's big enough to eat us. <laughs> Claudia, it isn't a cow. That is silly. <laughs> if it were a cow, Bluff would be barking at it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, here goes. Why, it's a, it's a hammock. It's a very special kind of a hammock. It's the newest kind of a seal hammock... You don't even need trees for I must admit, it's the most streamlined hammock I ever saw. It looks practically jet-propelled. David, it was such a bargain. I'll bet it was. I know my wife. Just as soon as it gets warm, we're going to put it out behind the kitchen under a tree, and you can lie there all afternoon and read the Sunday papers. <laughs> it's warm enough right now. And I'm going to climb in the hammock and read my evening papers in comfort. <gasps> you can't do that. This is for the country. <laughs> Ah, looks just what we've always needed in this apartment. It is? I was hoping you'd give me one for Christmas, but you didn't seem to get the hint. Who ever heard of a hammock in an apartment? Oh, who cares who heard of it? Now, let's see. Where are my white flannels? What do you need them for? Well, if a man's going to lie in a hammock, he's, he's got to be dressed for it. And my Please. beach umbrella. We haven't got a beach umbrella. We haven't even got a beach. Well, we'll have to get one. Now, how can I read in the hammock with the sun getting in my eyes. Nobody said you had to read. You can just lie in it and uh, smoke a pipe. We'll have to buy you a corn cob right this minute. <laughs> now you're getting the idea, darling. Uh, do you know how to get in it? What do you think it is, an upper berth? <laughs> Are you waiting to ring for the porter and have him bring you a ladder? I can see you've had very little experience with hammocks. 
They're easy to climb in, but not so easy to stay in. Sounds like a canoe. Now, I'm I'm going to get in, and don't you rock the boat. Aye, sir. All right, here we go. It's leaning a little starward. <laughs> sure, you don't mean poor <laughs> sailor. <laughs> this isn't the life. How do you feel? <sighs> well, how do you like the, that view of our meadow? Oh, listen to the cattle mooing. Is it time to milk them? Tomorrow, darling, I'm going to get a pail. Well, you can milk them tomorrow. I'm glad we decided to have that bay window changed. Certainly looks nice from out here, doesn't it? And that brook, listen to it babble. Or do I mean you? Darling, you mustn't insult a man when he's lying in a hammock. He's liable to fall out and make dents in your farm. Don't you want me to rock you, darling? No, you climb aboard, matey. Come on, we can rock it ourselves. Is there room for two of the hammock? Well, there's only one way to find out. And wait till you see what a view of our farm you'll get from up here. Well, I'm going to try. I'll stand on this chair and then I'll just step in. Take it easy. Take it easy. It's all right, old boy. You like it up here in the country. Here I come, David. Take it easy now. These things are tricky. Well, you made it seem easy enough. Hey, hey, watch out. Watch watch out. Not so fast. Oh. Oh. This is wonderful. Uh, it is sort of especially cozy, isn't it? David, if people always had hammocks, why did anyone ever bother inventing a bed? If people had always had you, no one would have bothered inventing the moon. It's unnecessary. It's gilding the lily. That's sweet. David, I love you. I love you, too. Hey, don't tip the canoe. Well, don't try to stand up in it, either. I won't. Say, David, how does anybody get out of a hammock? It's impossible. You might as well resign yourself to spend the night right My here. My resignation is cheerfully accepted. You can't climb out the top. And if you try to go over the side, you tip it over. So, here we are. Oh, how nice. Claudia. <laughs> Claudia, don't wiggle so. Claudia. I'm not wiggling. Claudia, look out. <laughs> oh, David. Oh, you hurt, darling. Just my pride. Then cheer up. You can eat off the mantle. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Isn't it nice that so many food stores have Coca-Cola coolers these days? Makes marketing practically a pleasure, doesn't it? Now, when you get impatient or weary, just look around for the familiar red cooler. Spend five minutes and five cents. Enjoy a bottle of ice-cold Coke, and you can finish your marketing refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir, and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes.